For Trent, um, earlier you criticized Protestants for being an authority unto themselves. They'll find a church that agrees with their individual understanding of scripture and then go with that. But you believe that orthodoxy has false teachings, you believe that Coptics have false teachings, you believe that Protestants have false mm -hmm. teachings, so aren't you an authority unto yourself when you right. judge them and find them lacking and choose to be Catholic? Right, no, I agree that everyone, and actually, uh, I was watching Gavin's video, Sola Scriptura Defended, to prepare for the debate, and I show up in it, but he says I made a good point, so I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> uh, because I said in, in that video that I, there is an argument, like if you say, oh, so Protestantism is bad because you have to use private judgment. Well, we, we, at the end of the day, we all have to use private judgment to, to decide the data comes in and I have to figure out what's true. Like that, that is just, that's everybody. Uh, the point I was making there was that if the claim is that the church has authority under the model of sola scriptura, that to me seems like a very hollow claim when a person is always free to be able to say, that the church has misunderstood scripture. Uh, I've noticed this a lot, like the pro I engage with a lot of Protestants on YouTube, but I find the well thought out Protestants are the ones who are deeply committed to magisterial Protestantism. They'll read the reformers and those who came after them and they're well committed to that. And sometimes they speak derisively of uh, evangelicals, no creed but the Bible, or people who practice solo scriptura instead of sola scriptura. But I don't think there's warrant to be that derisive when the bare bones framework, no other infallible rule of faith, they're both using the same methodology in that respect. So my, my uh, criticism was that because uh, under sola scriptura, the church's authority can be gainsayed so easily, uh, you lead to these problems where the church isn't really an authority you are to speak on many of these matters. But yes, ultimately we do have to find out what is true and what is not. And I have to do that as a Catholic. Like the church will teach things that I find uncomfortable, but I assent to say, even though I find this uncomfortable, God has guided the church with the spirit. And so I will, I will assent to that. I'm glad I spoke positively about Trent in that video he, because he makes many great points. He's a great debater, a great person. So I know these debates are very charged, but, uh, Happy to, I want to emphasize that. Um, I, I want to underscore the question. I think it's a great question, and I do think that this is a point where there really isn't as much difference as there is purported to be between Protestants and Roman Catholics or other Eastern Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, Assyrian. I mean, you know, earlier William Lane Craig came up. I also want to honor him and say he's a fantastic Christian apologist who's advanced the gospel so much. Um, but when it comes to his rejection of the doctrine we mentioned earlier or something like this, he's really in the same exact position. If his local church has that doctrine in the statement of faith, he's out. You have to submit to the church as a Protestant. I, I'll give an example. There's lots of things as a Christian I submit to the church to. Lots. One example is the doctrine of hell. I don't like that doctrine. It makes me exquisitely uncomfortable. I submit to it because it's the historic consensus of the church. There's things in my ordination credentials, my, my uh, body of ordination that are, um, you know, it's not what I would have thought of. I submit to it. So there's a tension here for all of us. Private, dis private judgment makes the most important and poignant decisions of your life. Am I going to be a Christian? Private judgment. Which church will I join? Private judgment. Every day you remain in that church, private judgment. You could at any point leave that church and join another one. It's your private judgment. But at the same time, then we submit so, to what that church teaches. And then there are more um, less technical forms of submission to the broader Catholic consensus, we could say, lowercase c. So I don't think adding infallibility suddenly enhances that too greatly. It seems to me that even the, the lowly Protestants in, in, their, in their lowly church will be submitting to that church every day they are there. They could be barred from the Lord's Supper at any time. They could be kicked out of the church, excommunicated at any time. That's a real act of authority. They have to, they have to sign off on that church's doctrine to join that church. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe or you're a dingus. What's a dingus exactly? used to refer to something one cannot or does not wish to name specifically. <laughs> you don't have to subscribe, but if you did, I'd love it. You dingus. Like the video. <laughs> That's where you to that one. Take one.